All right, we'll go ahead and we will get started. And if others join us in the meantime, they're welcome to just hop right in. All right, so to start, if you want to have a second browser or a window open, or you have another computer and you wanna follow along and log into your own formative account as we go through the training today, you are more than welcome to do so. It's formative.com if you don't already have that. If you'd prefer to just follow along and listen as we go through everything, that is totally okay as well. And again, we have multiple methods of logging in. You can log in with Google, Clever, Microsoft, or just using your user name or password. So a little bit about me and we get started. My name is Katie Jill. I am a client success manager here with Formative. I am a former teacher. I have taught a pre-K collaborative class, kindergarten, special ed, and was an RTI specialist. I am a dog mom to four dog res amazing rescues. If you hear them, I apologize in advance. They are not always the quietest creatures. I was born and raised in the New England area. I have lived all over the place, currently in Colorado, and I really love to travel and learn new things. So some things to know as we move on with a session today, this is being recorded. So you will have the opportunity to go back and view it later, or if you missed it, you'll be able to still see it. We are scheduled for about 30 minutes. If you have any questions as we go through anything, please just pop them right into the chat and we will get them answered for you. So today's session is focused on organizing your formative account. We're gonna look at creating folders, closing out your formatives, archiving classes, and moving formatives in and out of your folders. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and dive right in. So for the rest of this, I'm going to switch over to my formative account so I can walk you through how to do everything and where it all is. So we start, go ahead right over to your dashboard. Now, the first thing we're going to look at is creating folders. So if your dashboard looks anything like mine, you've got a long line of folders all down that side and they're not really in any particular order. Some people can work like this, other people kind of drives them a little crazy. So mine's really busy, it's really not organized. Let's look at having how we can help clean that up a little bit. Folders are a great way of doing this. To add a new folder up at that top left hand side, you'll see a blue button with that plus folder symbol there. You click on that and it prompts us to name our folder. So I'm gonna name this one math. And then I just hit add. Now that folder will be at the top of my dashboard because it's the newest one. I have a few options after I've created a folder. If I click that little circle next to it, I've got some options that pop up at the bottom. If I decide I wanna to add to the name or change the name, I can hit rename it. I can choose to share this folder. So maybe I wanna share it with one of my colleagues and add them as a collaborator to that folder. You know, we work together all the time. I want them to have access as well. I can type in their email address here, add them as a collaborator. I can simply give somebody a copy of this folder. So that way they have the folder, they create their own copy of it, it's theirs to do what they want and it's not gonna mess with anything that I have or I can publish it to the library. So that would mean that everything that is in that folder gets published together. I can also move that folder. So if I wanna move that inside another folder and kind of have them stacked, I have that option. And then if I decide I don't want that folder anymore, I can hit that delete button. It does prompt me with, are you sure? just to make sure that that is really what you wanna do, you hit that delete button and there it goes. Any questions about adding folders? They're fairly simple to add. So some other suggestions for your folders, if you're not sure, you know, your, your dashboard's a little confusing, you've got a lot there, you're not sure how you wanna organize them, some 
suggestions would be you could sort of by grade level if you teach multiple grades. You could do it by subject matter. You could even do it by year. If you have all your formatives from, say, the year 2019, 2020, you can create a folder for that school year and put everything from it in there. So that way you're not seeing the same things over and over, but you still keep everything. Right. Now you've created your folder. How do you get these fo formatives into your folder? So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna click on this little math practice number four. And that bubble pops up my little options down here. The move option allows me to move it into a folder. Now, if you notice, I selected a formative that was shared with me. So you get a notification that pops up. If you move a folder, or a formative that you do not own, that you are a collaborator on, the others will lose access. So with this, okay, you know, I want that in my math folder, but I don't want them to all lose access. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to make a copy of it. Now you'll see I have that same formative, Math practice number four, same thing down here, but this one's not shared with anybody. So I can move that safely without worrying that somebody else is going to lose access. So I hit the bubble, bring up my move, and click the folder I would like to move it to. So what do I do with this one now? I still have this on my dashboard and I don't want it there. My goal was to clean up my formative account, not just create additional formatives. If I click on it and I view those sharing settings, I can see who the owner was and who all the collaborators are. If I find my name, I should be able to delete it. I can see that I'm a collaborator. So I'm going to exit out of this. I'm going to hit delete. And I'm going to remove slowly. Let me hit refresh and see if that'll help. We're moving a little slow today. All right, so my delete button isn't working quite yet but I can also go back and check under my sharing settings. I know that Sarah has given me access, so I can go back and ask her to remove me. And then that'll clear it up on my dashboard. Something important to note with your folders. If you have a folder shared with other collaborators, say you're working with your team, you have a folder designated for math. It's shared with all the math teachers you work with. If you move a folder in there, it does not automatically share with whoever has access to the folder. To automatically share with those who have access to the folder, you need to go into the folder and then add your new formative. So it's a little different than Google Drive. Google Drive is, you know, you can drag things and it'll automatically share. Formative is not like that. You have to make sure that you create your formative from within the shared folder. If you move a folder or a formative into a folder and would like that shared, just go back and double check those shared settings. Okay, so we'll go ahead and move on. I'm gonna go back to my dashboard now. All right. So now let's take a look at closing out some formatives. Now you know when you assign your formatives to your students, they have, you have the option of setting a time where it will close out and it'll be done and you can't accept any more submissions on it. If you're looking at some of your formatives, maybe they're from last semester, last year, and it's still open, there's an easy way to close those out. And this will not only show on your dashboard that, hey, this formative is done, it's over, nobody can add anything, 
but it'll also help clean up your students' formatives. So that way their dashboard doesn't show with formatives that were assigned two to three months ago or last year. So I'm gonna go ahead into one of my folders. And you can see right here in the middle, I have one of my formatives. It had three students who had submitted it. I've got that little green lightning rod there indicating that it's still open. So if I click there, I have this adjust settings options. I go to adjust settings and down at the bottom where it says open right now, if I toggle that off, it'll now show as closed. So this means that students can no longer submit any responses for it. It shows as closed on my dashboard. So I know that that formative is done. And when my students go in, so anyone in this class, when they log into their formative account, they're no longer going to see it pop up as something that they have to take. So again, this helps you keeping track of what formatives are open and which ones are closed, you know, so where are students still working? Where are you allowing submissions still? And it also helps your students keep track of what they need to get done and what's already been taken care of. Any questions about closing formatives? All right, the share settings for the folders, yep. So I'm gonna go back to my dashboard. The little bubbles right next to the folders. So if I click on this one for math, the one I just created, I have all these options that pop up at the bottom. If I hit that share, I can add in my collaborators. So I would just type in an email of whoever I would like to share it with. I can give them edit and assign options where they can go in and they can edit everything in there as well as assigning any formatives that are in that folder. Or I could switch it to assign only if I don't want them to make changes. If you wanna give somebody their own copy of that folder, you can give them a copy of it. So this would allow them to just make a full copy and it's theirs. So you don't have to worry about, okay, they gave them access to this, this folder and now they changed something and now it's messed up for me. If you give them a copy, that is their copy and they can do what they want with it. And then you can also publish it to the library. So if you have, you know, say you're creating a, a bunch of documents and a bunch of formatives that go with a certain unit and you want to put them all together in one folder and share it out into the library. So the rest of your school, your organization, or even just the general public who uses formative wants to use it, you can do that as well. And you'll see, because I have some folder, some formatives in that folder, they would all get published together. So they're all kind of lumped together now. Did that answer your question? Not a problem. Okay. So we've looked at creating our folders, moving some formatives around into our folders, sharing them out, and closing out formatives so that way they're done. Now let's take a look at our classes tab. As you can see, I've got a bunch of classes on here. Sometimes things change in the middle of the year. You've gotten assigned to a new grade level, you move schools, um, and, you know, anything happens, or maybe you just got really busy over the summer and you still have all your classes from last year or the year before, and you don't want them all to show up because this gets overwhelming. You look at it, okay, where's my one for this year? What you can do with your classes is you can archive them. Now, this is great because it does not delete them. It does not get rid of them completely. It just removes them out of your vision. So that way they're not showing up on this main screen. The way you do this, is you click on that little square next to the class that you want. You've got those options that show up at the bottom and you just hit archive. Everything is still there, it's just going to be hidden. So I'm gonna hit that archive class and now it no longer shows up on my classes tab. Now, if I realize, uh oh, I'm meant to archive this one and I archived the wrong one. How do I get it back? Super easy. 
up at the top on the right hand side, you have a little button that you can toggle on that says show archive. So if I hit that option, toggle that on, I can see the two different classes that I have archived. If I want to get them back, you know, I didn't really mean to archive it. I didn't want it to disappear on me. I still want to see all that stuff. Again, I hit that little square and I can simply restore it. I toggle off show archive and now that class is back on my main list. Haven't lost anything, any classes, any students that were in there, any formatives they've done, everything is still there. So it does not get rid of everything forever and you're not, you haven't lost anything. It's all still there. It just kind of hides it. Any questions about archiving classes? So those are the main ways that you can organize your formative account. Again, you have a ton of flexibility with how you wanna create your folders, how you wanna organize them, if you wanna move a folder inside a folder. The biggest thing to pay attention to when you are organizing your account is those shared settings. Make sure that if you are the recipient you know, somebody has shared a folder or a formative with you, that you double check with them before you move it. Because if you move it for you, it moves it for everyone. Well, as always, if you ever need any more resources, our Help Center is amazing. There's articles about anything you could possibly need. We also have our training center where Later on, you will be able to review this webinar, as well as view any other webinars that we've already had or sign up for future ones. If you ever need additional help, you know, you're, you've tried the problem solved, you looked at the Help Center articles, still don't have your answer. If you contact our formative support, we will have somebody there to get back to you right away. We have somebody in the, the chat from about 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time. So they respond pretty quickly. They can help you out with any, any issues you may have. If you don't have any other questions, feel free to hop out and take the rest of your day back. And I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season and a great and well-deserved winter break for those of you who are getting a winter break.